Hello everyone and welcome to Beverly Alums Making a Black History. I'm Alana Morgan at Miss Teen California United States and head anchor here at KBEV. Today I have the honor of interviewing director and founder of the clothing company Illegal Civilization and Beverly alum Mikey Alfred. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm great. So at the age of 11, you attended a film school for kids at Columbia University. What was that like? And how do you think the outcome of one of your first projects not getting applauded contributed to your success as a director today? Mm. Um, <laughs> so I got the opportunity to go to Columbia University in New York when I was 11 from my mom's uh, boss and some of her family friends where they kind of all sat me down and were really disappointed that I was choosing like skateboarding as my path. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I filmed skateboarding. So my mom's like, would you want to be doing film? Like, would you want to put your focus more on that? And I'm like, look, I'll go to a film school. Like, I'd love to just get the experience. So. I go out to New York, we're staying in dorms, you know, I'm feeling like, wow, this is really cool, like, out in New York by yourself as a little kid, and uh, the whole thing with the class was, you know, on the last day, you're gonna have to screen your short film, mm -hmm. so the last day comes, and, you know, I go first, because my last name is Alfred, when the movie's over, the teacher's like, okay, cool, like, next no one claps I'm just looking around like god damn you know? <laughs> um, and I had a really simple story it was like a kid going from his dorm room to class mm -hmm. on the way he gets all these problems I used some music and I was pretty happy with what came out the next kid goes up and his movie has no story no music and it's just someone walking around New York Wow. And at the end, the whole class claps. And the teacher's like, you know, this is brave filmmaking. Like, I sat there like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I took that experience and I went home and I sort of understood, like, okay, school is just not for me. It's not my thing. Um, you know, that second kid before his movie played, he told the class, like, I'm inspired by Godard. And, you know, he kind of had all these inspirations, right? Mm -hmm. And it made me realize, like, wow, so much of his film was just the talking. And I don't know if everyone saw the same, like, result that I was seeing. Um, but when I got back to LA, I told my mom, like, I'm really for sure not going to college. I know that 100%. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not going to go to film school. But I know now that I want to do film because if I don't, kids like that are going to be the only ones making movies. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. You know, I want to make sure there's still entertaining, simple, fun movies that people who, you know, work construction or work from a nine to five can come home and just relax and be happy mm -hmm. and not feel like they have to figure it out you know or feel like the people on the screen don't represent them um, I, I want to represent you know normal people working people and uh make stuff that's fun and, and easy to watch you know Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you started your company, Illegal Civilization, at a young age. Being a young entrepreneur, what is the most vital piece of knowledge that you have gained and that knowledge that you would like to share with other young students? Mm. Uh, this is something I've learned sort of more recently. I started my business when I was 12 mm -hmm. and we were selling t-shirts online at first. 
after a few years, I did a deal with a company called Baker Boys. Mm -hmm. They are a distributor in skateboarding. They're one of the biggest and the coolest. And the way the deal works is, you know, myself, Legal Civ, we would design clothes. We give it to Baker Boys. They produce them and then get them out into stores and all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I got to learn so much through that experience. And um, after Baker Boys, I did a deal with Universal Merchandising. And it was really like a big accomplishment. It felt cool to like look at the emails at the bottom and see Universal. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that experience, before I was, you know, 23, 24, I've already done it the independent route. Mm -hmm. I did it with a skate distributor. And then I did it with the biggest dogs that there is. And I was so thankful that I wasn't scared to just make choices and go through the experience. And even if it didn't end in the way I thought originally, I still got the experience. So now I just turned 26 yesterday. Yesterday was my birthday. Oh, happy. Um, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, thinking about my birthday last night, it was really cool being like, wow, I'm only 26, but I've done a lot and I've been through a lot. So my advice to young entrepreneurs is if you're young, it's an excuse to make poor choices, to fuck up on your business. And damn, I don't mean to say fuck up, this is for school, but, um, <laughs> you know, if, if you're a young entrepreneur, it gives you an excuse to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that excuse should be li liberating, you know, and, and um, provide a sense of freedom where you know you don't have to always make the perfect choice because you're only 20, you're only 19, you're only 21. Um, once you have kids and you have like a mortgage and stuff like that, then you can be reckless, you know, but until then just try everything and just see what works with your business, what doesn't work. Um, so that would be my advice to young entrepreneurs is don't be scared to try stuff. That was a great piece of advice. So being a former student in KBEV yourself, how has Beverly and more specifically KBEV contributed to you becoming the successful filmmaker you are today? <laughs> so, you know, you guys heard what Mr. Carey said before he hung up. Um, the whole reason I went to Beverly was because I was at a school called Loyola before that. Mm. Loyola's all boys. It's really, really intense. And um, it's really expensive. In ninth grade, I was already going on tour with Tyler Creator and Our Future and was missing months and months of school so I got to a point where I'm like look I need to be in a school situation mm -hmm. that supports me where I can still follow my passion but get what I need to get done with school at Loyola it's not possible you know you have to pick one or the other so I transferred to Beverly and when I got there I felt that support where when I'm saying I want to do film, the teacher's not looking at me like, huh? You know, <laughs> where at my other school, the teacher would be like, film, I mean, okay, but focus on these books, you know. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carey, when I got to Beverly, he was listening. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, you want to do film? How do you want to do it? And I would tell him, this is what I'm thinking. This is the vision that I see. And he gave me the space to do that, you mm -hmm. know? I got to use his editing rooms. He would give me, you know, a lot of creative freedom and kind of let me take a project that was maybe supposed to be thought of this way mm -hmm. and run it through my skateboard North Hollywood filter and do it my way. Um, so I'm forever thankful for Mr. Carey and for KBEV specifically because he created a space where you could be creative, exactly. you could learn. And you could just advance yourself in the way that you personally saw fit. You know, I feel like Mr. Carey was what a teacher should be, which is a supporter and an advocate and someone who is a wind that is trying to push you forward, you know? Um, and that's why I'm on this Zoom right now. Like I told him, 
it doesn't matter what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> if you need me to do something, I'm going to come and do it. Easy call. Yes. So you mentioned other pieces of your success, but when did you realize your career was starting to take off officially and you started to actually make a name for yourself? Mm. It's a great question because it's <laughs> like any entrepreneur, any person that has to set their own benchmarks. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't have like a diploma or stuff like that to kind of tell me where I'm at in my life trajectory. I have to set my own uh, benchmarks. So I guess the moment for me when I really realized that I'm successful and I've done something important is uh, I did a trip to Australia and you can look up the video on YouTube if you type in Illegal Civ Australia mm -hmm. with our skate team and um, we're sitting out there. Mm -hmm. All the guys that were on the team at the time were already there for, you know, three or four years and there was one new guy's name was Zach Saracino. Mm -hmm. He's a really great skater. He was great on camera. And at the end of the trip, I remember he had mentioned like, this was such a fun trip. This was one of the most fun skate trips I've ever been on. And all the guys started to talk about how we went to Barcelona and London and all these other places we've traveled to. And I felt success in my heart being like, man, I've been able to take guys around the world and skateboard with them and make memories in their life that hopefully they'll never forget mm -hmm. and while we're doing that we're also inspiring the kids watching us to go damn I could get out in the world too I could travel the world too just like those guys did just like those people did um so yeah success to me though is being like a good person in other people's lives and uh yeah I felt successful kind of since high school you know um since being able to to take people on trips and kind of make their dreams come true that's success for sure working with Jonah Hill and A24 and Vince Vaughn and all this other stuff is amazing I'm really hyped on that too Definitely. Being important to young kids, though, and making a good positive impact on their life, that's top importance to me. Agreed. So it is Black History Month. So who it is Black History Month. So who in Black history have you looked up to and why? Mm. Another great question. <laughs> um... Okay, this one is obvious if, um, you know, you knew me, I love Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. I feel like he set a great example and he's been very inspiring for people to show the story that you can come from the Marcy Project and rise to the heights he's risen to you know, where he has a sports agency, luxury champagne brands, clothing brands. He works in music. He works in all these different valleys and places. And in each space, he helps more people who are disenfranchised make it. Um, even in his investment portfolio, they're starting to sell cannabis he has a company where there's an article that came out the woman who owns it she got passed on over a hundred times by venture capital firms and when she got to jay-z he made the investment and then things mm -hmm. became successful um so yeah i really look up to him because i think he set a good example and i feel like he's really risen against all odds you know mm -hmm. 
Definitely. So back in 2019, your company collabed with Doritos. So what sparked this unique collaboration? Yeah. Um, I worked with Doritos because they came to me with the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And when I did my research, I realized that no other skate company had ever worked with Doritos. Mm -hmm. My whole goal with Illegal Civs is always to push skateboarding to new heights Definitely. and take it to places that it hasn't been before. So for me to partner up with the people from Doritos, you know, <laughs> huge, huge. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I did it simply because I wanted to raise the glass ceiling, you know, and show that you guys can say it's corny. You can say whatever you want, but the first cowboy who comes over the mountain always gets the most arrows, you know? Um, so it's okay. Say it. I'm not worried. <laughs> no, I think it's an amazing collaboration. And like you said, it's something different and something no one else would um, like expect. So definitely, I think it's important to note because it's such a cool collaboration. And so lastly, um, can KBEV get any inside scoop to any new projects that you have coming up? <laughs> um, I have a new movie, North Hollywood. Um, this is actually a scoop. I'm going to give you a real scoop. Oh, okay. There's a, there's a screening at the brand new SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, mm -hmm. March 26th, 27th, and 28th. This okay. will be SoFi's first public event. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be really dope. Um, and again, like the reason I want to work with SoFi is because I've never heard of a skate movie premiering at an arena, mm -hmm. at a stadium. Um, so I'm like, let's go. You know, that sounds cool. Let's let's break another barrier. Yeah, that's so cool. You're just reaching new heights. I love how you define all odds and keep going and never let defeat or anything get you down. So thank you so much, Mr. Alfred, for being a part of today's interview. We look forward to all of your success that you have to come and more growth in your company. But once again, I'm Alana Morgan, Miss Teen California, United States, and from KBF6, and we will see you soon.